Okay, we're standing here with Levi Tafari, fresh after completing the workshop with some of the children. I've got to say, personally, I was really impressed with some of the kids' work. I mean, do you find that regularly you're surprised by what can come out? Yeah, because for me, young people, it's all in there. And they just need the experience mm -hmm. and to be able to express that experience and shown the right way to do so. And we only had a couple of hours in there today. And the stuff that they wrote, an adult could have written it yes. because they were talking about unity and vibes. And, and it's nice because reggae music, which is what we're celebrating, has all of those elements. And through reggae, which is a positive vibe, we can do positive works. So different music have a different tone or different ambience. And reggae just covers that positive one love. It just makes you feel good. And if you got sunshine in the mix, even better. You know? We didn't quite make the sunshine, but we, we did a good enough job. We did it in June. And, and we should know better, but no. But they did, they worked yeah. extremely hard. And like I said, they only had a couple of hours to do it. And we just discussed, I gave them a little bit of my vibe talk to them about the mechanics of writing, metaphors, similes, tone. I, they were impressed with the five eyes, which is inspiration, ideas, imagination, information, and imagery. So once we bring those five together, coupled with, um, coupled with our senses, because everything we do, we rely on our senses, whether it's to see, to smell, you know, to touch, taste, hear, and, with reggae, you know, ears are important. We need to hear the vibes. But then there's an exhibition of artwork going on and people associate reggae with the red, yellow and green and the Jamaican yes, colors yes, yes, and, yes. you know, the black, yellow and green. So, yeah, man. So it was just translating that across to them. And they picked up on it, man. It's one of those things where you think about the universal themes of not just reggae music, but uh, Rastafarianism as well. And they're very simple messages. And sometimes as children, you, you don't need the, the whole uncluttenedness that you get in school. That's you right. just need to break it down to something that they can understand. Yeah. Well, we're demystifying things because in school, you know, it's about um, academia. And academia has set itself up on this level that, you know, only a certain few can come in and you can only get access to it through us. But creativity, you get access to yourself yes. and you don't need no other entity. You just need that inspiration and a good imagination and you can express yourself. And that's what creativity brings, you know? Now, you've always thought of yourself as a teacher, even within your, the works that you were doing before, and you've been doing stuff with kids for quite some time oh, now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I think, what is it you find about the way that words work that can kind of help kind of fire off that imagination within children? I think the students realize that words have power and how powerful words are. Because when we were youths, they used to have this saying, sticks and stones will break my bones, but names will never hurt you. Mm -hmm. But if someone called you a nasty derogatory name, it would lick you, man. Yeah. You know, from you've got human feelings and emotions, it will hurt. Mm -hmm. So it's getting around that and starting to realize the power of words. Yes. And I would think amongst all the species on the planet, the fact that we have a language that is written down and communicated through sounds that sets us apart from other species, you know? It's a fantastic way. I would never have thought of putting it that way myself, but it's very no, true. But it's true, isn't it? No, it's 100%. Because other species, I mean, parrots can talk, but they parrot, they mimic. Yes, <laughs> they don't understand. They don't understand, they can't put things into context. Mm. So it, it, it's like we have certain pearls of wisdom. One of my favorites is, um, uh, what? That the, the difference between knowledge and wisdom is that knowledge teaches you that a tomato is a fruit, but wisdom teaches you that you don't put a tomato in a fruit salad. <laughs> you know what yes, I mean? yes, yes. So we have the ability to come up with a reasoning mm -hmm. like that. And it's almost like translating the ideas and being able to channel them into something useful because at this time, for, for not just for children, but for all people, mm -hmm. in the uncertainty that we're facing, not just in Britain, but across the world, across the world. there's a lot of frustration in people. And I feel like something what you're doing is able to give people the tools to be able to, you know, turn those frustrations yeah. into something, channel them into positivity. But we, 
I'm from Toxteth in Liverpool, and that's not, you know, it's not Monte Carlo, <laughs> and it's it's not Chelsea in London. It, you know, it's Toxteth. Mm -hmm. So I feel the pain. In, in one of my poems, I talk about, you know, um, feeling the revolution with everybody else, mm -hmm. and when when you're in our situation, everything is real, yes. you know, because. For me, I don't write abstract poetry because my situation isn't abstract. When someone hates me, they let me know directly. Yes. You're a beep, 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 or you know, you can't come in here, or mm -hmm. you know, you're not welcome. So I like to be direct, mm -hmm. and as Reggae said, live and direct. Yes, you know, we don't skirt around an issue, or you know, mm -hmm. we just come direct, man. You know, and that's how it is. One of the probably the biggest difference from when you and even when I was growing up compared to now is the information that's available to children. But a lot of the time it's information they're finding from themselves, whether they're sitting alone at a computer or what have you. Now, someone as yourself, a teacher, do you feel that you still got an important role to play in allowing, illuminating these children and showing them what these words can mean and what the culture that they came from can represent? Yeah, the thing is, you can't divorce yourself from the human spirit. That human spirit is vital and essential to communication yes. and the physical shows people how that spirit is feeling so if I'm feeling good yeah man you know <laughs> like, but if my vex you know so my spirit manifests itself through the physical so a machine could never replace that no, no, ma no matter how much money you have and how many how many material possessions you could have the best car in the world the nicest house all the latest gadgets. But if you haven't got another human spirit in there to say good morning to when you wake up in the morning and embrace or to lie with, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of a night time, then what's the point of having all of that? Because I go places sometimes, I've been to different parts of the world and some of the, the scenery is stunning. Mm -hmm. And if my wife doesn't come, the first thing that comes across my head, I wish, wish Carol was, was here to share this one. Just look at the beauty, mm -hmm. you know? So it's all about those human relationships. Yeah, it's about you. And I'm not a technophobe, and I think technology has its place. And it's the way for young people now. When I was a youth, you know, it was slate and chalk. <laughs> <laughs> but, now, but now the youths, them, it's keyboards and mm -hmm. touchpad. And that's their way. But they shouldn't let that override no. that human expression. Definitely. Because it's just a machine, and unless we engage it, it doesn't engage. Not at all. You know? Now, one of the things I wanted to ask you is about Liverpool specifically. Mm -hmm. Now, having an event like this in Liverpool, do you feel like this is one of the places that is willing to embrace not just reggae culture, but the attitude of the one love, the unity and harmony? Do you feel like Liverpool has some of those traits of its own? I would like, yeah, I would like to think so, because Liverpool, when we went for the European capital city of culture, um, what the, the, the um, slogan was, um, the world in one city. Mm -hmm. I think it was yes. something like that, wasn't it? The world in one city. And then if you look at Liverpool as a city, that we have a term scouse. And scouse is a stew. A stew is an eclectic mix of ingredients. And Liverpool culturally is a stew. Mm -hmm. You know, it's um it's got the oldest black community in Europe, the oldest Chinese community in Europe. One of the largest, I think the largest Irish community outside of Dublin. It has a Welsh influence, a Lancastrian. So everything is here. Yes. And Liverpool, you know, there, is, there are isms and schisms here like everywhere else. But Scousers tend to be warm people, mm -hmm. you know. We invite people and we embrace people. Yes. And people, whenever Scousers go abroad as well, People always gravitate to Scousers because <laughs> on my travels, I've been to like China and America and, and you always meet a Scouser. <laughs> and it's always like, all right, there, man. And you always know you're going to have a good evening after that. Evening, man, so. <laughs>